In recent years, DC Metro ridership has dropped substantially. Since 2012, average daily ridership has dropped from 744,000 riders to 639,000. Now, President Trump is planning to cut $150 million in the funds formally, set to go towards improving the Metro. Despite the Metro looking better on paper in numerous ways, it is still struggling to maintain and gain ridership. From an ecological standpoint, the Metro Rail system beats car travel in terms of minimizing CO2 emissions. For every mile the average car travels, it emits 0.4 kilograms of carbon dioxide, CO2. Metrorail trains produce 4 kilograms of CO2 over the same distance. However, considering the maximum capacity of most cars is 5 people, and the maximum capacity of a metro train is 1,400 people, the per person em emissions created by the metro rail travel are 30 to 150 times less than that created by car travel. According to the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, for every DC commuter that chooses the metro over commuting by car, 67 kilograms of CO2 is saved from entering the atmosphere. This is equivalent to about 7.5 gallons of gas per week per person. So, along with that, regardless of whether or not you choose to go on the metro, that metro train will still be going. Even if you do choose to just go in your car and go to work or wherever you need to go. Furthermore, metro rail travel is theoretically faster than commuting by car. The average speed of a metro train is 35 miles per hour, counting stops, while the average speed of a car on I-66 during rush hour is just 16 miles per hour, which has recently been made even slower and more expensive by new tolls along that route. Given these and other factors, choosing the metro should be a no-brainer. However, ridership has been decreasing by 14% a year on average since 2012. We talked to DC commuters to get their perspective on these issues and to help answer the question of why less commuters are choosing to take the train. I use 100% metro, subway, and bus. So I take a car, I own my own car, and I drive it when I need to go uh, anywhere. I don't like to drive. I grew up in the Northern Virginia area and it's very, very stressful learning how to drive in the D.C. area. It's really convenient having a car. Um, it's not convenient having to do the maintenance and the oil changes and if it breaks down or something. But um, it's, it's just really convenient. I hear all these stories about the metro breaking down and issues with buses and I just I don't want to deal with that so I just drive. Certain lines have trouble being on time. I know one week the red line caught fire twice, um, so a little bit stressful. So yeah, it's it's a love-hate relationship. I actually wish I was more reliant on public transportation only because I understand it's much better for the environment. I'm really big on like zero waste and eco-friendly products and things like that. And driving a car is something I have not yet changed about my lifestyle. Yeah, so I wouldn't really recommend it for other people. I would recommend taking public transportation. <laughs> Once you cut funding for Metro uh, and the service decreases, fewer people take Metro and then that means they're commuting by car. So that makes the traffic worse. So with you're going to cut Metro, it negatively impacts the people that are still stuck taking Metro and then it negatively impacts the people that are using the roads because more cars are on the road. Metro needs to do a better job of um, being, you know, timeliness, being safe, and then I mean, getting what you pay for. I mean, the Metro cuts basically, I'm now paying equal or more money for less service. And so that's the type of thing that is causing people to finally get cars. From these interviews, it's clear that although the Metro is ecologically friendly, it's not always economically or ergonomically friendly. With constant delays and the occasional breakdown, Metro riders often have less control over their timing compared to car drivers. When commuters can't risk being late to a job, they often rethink taking the Metro in favor of the option that usually proves to be more reliable, driving their cars. So what's the solution? Trump's budget cuts certainly don't seem to be. As one of our interviewees said, things already aren't great and the proposed budget cuts would only make things worse. If the metro system has more funds to work with, it could theoretically maintain and even convert car users like Sharon to increase ridership. Prospects are currently looking a bit bleak for the metro. 
However, with more than 600,000 daily riders, it's still an irreplaceable part of DC life. There is still hope. The Metro has made recent improvements like the introduction of the 7000 series train car. And it continues to use what funds it still has to expand service and improve existing lines. With these improvements, hopefully more riders will be drawn to using the Metro system so that we all can experience the ecological benefits created when a commuter chooses to leave their car in the garage and ride the Metro instead.